Hey y'all, my name's Tyson, and this time around, let's look at some advanced tips for the Rotate tool. So hopefully you are familiar with the Rotate tool. This won't be covering the basics. We do have videos on that. What I wanna look at is situations where you're rotating basically off axis and a couple ways that we can sort of work with unique situations that come up where you don't have the convenience of the red, green, and blue axis directions to help you. Let's have a look. All right, um, let's start over here. Let's say you've got some windows going on. Well, one tip that you may know if you are familiar with the fundamentals of the rotate tool is that the rotate tool, you can use the arrow keys and a typical locking to lock the direction. But in this case, let's say this window needs to tilt out. It's a, it's a tilting window, not one that slides up and down. Well, as I go to the rotate tool, none of those directions are gonna help here. They're not aligned with the window. And although I could line up with this small surface, it's hard to get into this corner correctly. You can click and drag your mouse for the first click of the rotate tool, and that will let you place the rotation axis anywhere you'd like. So I can place it along the edge of this window and then come up for my second click and tilt this window out. So again, we can just select, say this window, we want to tilt it out, and instead of clicking once, I'm gonna click and drag the mouse and establish that first, uh, first rotational axis. And then it's easy to do, uh, rotate that on a direction not along the axis. Um, in this example, I broke this off. These other windows are components. And by creating them as components, this one, for example, has the red and green and blue axis aligned. So, even in a case like this, sometimes it's still just convenient to click and drag, even though I could have used the red uh, axis there, just because it's fast to do so. So that's the first tip. Remember that you can click and drag for that first establishment when using the rotate tool to establish the rotation axis. All right, let's move to the second example. This one happened to me in real life. I was uh, creating some projects that if I take this uh, piece here and use follow me, I was creating some kind of cone shaped projects that I was gonna go out in the shop and build. But to do so, to build this say with 12 pieces, I need to know what the compound angles are that would cut out this piece. So let me grab this piece of geometry and sort of move it over here to the side. And then I'll take a moment to clean it up and add our faces back in. I only need to figure out one of these pieces because all the, the other are gonna be identical. However, the problem is this. I need to find the angles for this. And I've all, I, I don't have anything on any axis. So if I try to use the protractor tool to establish some angles, I, I, I'm gonna have trouble um, getting that to work. So I, I want to line this piece up to the axis. Well, if I select it and group it, you can see that grouping doesn't align well with the axis either. I could come in here to the group, use the default tools, but that's not quite right. And if I tilt this one up, it's not quite right. And I, I'd have to go through a couple of things to try and get this laying down flat along the axis. So I'm gonna undo those. This is one of the cases where the more you use SketchUp, the more you appreciate that throwaway geometry or expendable geometry is really handy to have. So what I mean is I'm gonna draw a line on the red axis, and then I'm gonna take, and I drew it from this point, I'm gonna take and rotate this group, I'll lock to the blue direction to start, and I wanna make sure and grab this edge and then rotate it here. That way I know I have at least this edge in the red direction. 
that's a starting point. Then I'll take another piece of throwaway geometry out here in the green direction, grab this again. I'm gonna rotate this and I'll use that trick we just learned where I'll grab this corner and I could lock to the red or I could just grab and drag the mouse button as I'm doing here to establish that first line. And then I need somewhere on this lower surface or edge, click again and then I will bring it up and line it to that throwaway edge I just created. And finally, if I want to get this whole piece, let's say lined up with another axis, maybe I'll grab, because it should be flat at this point, but maybe I will grab a, another throwaway line here, draw, drag it out in the red direction, and rotate this like that. And from here, I would probably ungroup this and then regroup it as a grouper component so that its bounding box better, better correlates to the geometry. And from here, I could come in and easily use my protractor tool to measure out and say, okay, this compound angle would be 3.6 degrees and I'd need to tilt my saw blade at 14.5 degrees. And if I do that, I will get a nice, cone shape out of these pieces. So keep that in mind too. Sometimes when you're having difficulty rotating objects and getting them aligned, um, use some throwaway geometry that is drawn on the axis as reference. And one final tip, and I'm gonna come up to tags and hide, <laughs> I'm gonna hide the cheat that I, I've already revealed here. In this case, let's say we want to be able to rotate these various arms of this robot, uh, this robot arm, in various ways. However, how do we know where to rotate, you know, this center point from? There is no center point based on this. Um, if we try to rotate, even if we lock it to the blue direction, we're just kind of guessing at where the right point is. And as soon as we rotate, we've it's, it's not aligned with the base anymore. Even in a case like this, where maybe based on the geometry, we could assume that we'd rotate about the center of the circle, it's still gonna take us a few moments to hover, find that circle, uh, and it keeps wanting to snap to a different one. So it, it, this will work, we can sort of make it work, but it, it's, it's proven to be difficult. When you have anything that you know you're going to be rotating several times um, and you want, uh, you know it's, all, it's going to go off axis as well, create something like this. So I have just taken, say, in this piece of the arm, I have just embedded in here, I took the time to come in and say, there's the center. I'm going to draw a line and then just create a simple circle and I'm gonna put that as part of this group. I'm gonna put up here, I'm gonna have one for this one too. You may embed them in different places, but now it should be really easy for me to say, grab all of this group and rotate because I've got this guide to help rotate here. And then I'll grab these arms and rotate based on this guide that I've created. So they're nicely aligned and then I will take Let's say, I, I can keep this here, this piece, and I wanna rotate the claw so it's a little bit more vertically. Vertically? Anyway, that's the idea. And it put all of those guides, even if they're embedded inside other groups and components, each of these is their own uh, component. And I put those over here under a different tag so that I can turn them off when I don't need them, and then when I want to come back in to rotate, I can turn them back on and easily have the control that I want for this robot arm, or whatever example you have. Okay, that was it. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, 
Maybe you knew some of these, maybe some of these were different. Maybe you have some suggestions of your own. If you so, please do let us know and let us know what else you'd like to see in these skill builders as we want to uh, make these useful for you. If you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time.